Hi, I'm Jill Riley from The Current's Morning Show, and I'm really excited to be joined by Zoom video. This is just the way of the world right now. But it's nice because I'm so used to being on the radio and just hearing voices, but connecting face to face It's something that I really miss doing in person, but, you know, this is just the way of the world right now. And so um, I'm really happy to have Scott Avett of the Avett Brothers joining me. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Where are you right now? You look like you're in an art studio. I am. I'm in my art studio um, in Concord, North Carolina, which is an old farmhouse that I uh, gutted half of it and and, uh, inhabited. And here it is. Yeah. So, um, you know, right now, I mean, right now in North Carolina, I mean, there's quite the storm going on. I, uh-huh. I've never been to North Carolina. So where is Concord located? I mean, are are you being affected by this at all? No, not really from the okay. from the storm. I'm about four hours. Uh, OK. In. Now, I was okay. on the coast last week uh, and in Charleston. And so but it doesn't look like Charleston uh, got it. It's funny. The, the hurricanes can can catch North Carolina sometimes and they'll miss South Carolina because it's tucked in. And, um, but yeah, in, in the Charlotte area where we are, uh, they occasionally will come in. Hurricane Hugo in the late eighties was a, a beast for us. Mm-hmm. It, it was life changing for, for a moment. So, yeah. Well, I mean, we're talking today because, um, you know, you guys announced a new release due at the end of this month and it is called the third gleam. Uh, mm-hmm. EP. And I, I want, I mean, that's the, the, the purpose of our conversation. But, you know, before we get into talking about the new release, you know, I, I watched a video of uh, you and your brother, Seth, announcing this new release. Mm-hmm. And um, there was just, I imagine that it's a really kind of almost difficult time to be talking about new music or releasing new music, yeah, um, yeah, even though yeah. I think it's the best time to be connecting with fans and, mm-hmm. you know, keep the music rolling. I guess, can you talk about kind of where your head was at when it was time to release this music and w- when did it actually get made? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the interesting thing with the Gleam uh, series is that it is, um, it's it's like songs that are made in somewhat of a, of a quieter um more sacred space, if you will, uh, pockets away from the the big uh, noise of the bigger expression and the bigger machine. And um, the record was made on its own time before the pandemic and before the rolling out of of these long lasting social injustice, justices that are uh, that we're witnessing. Although it, it in hindsight we were. Um, uh, it, I don't know what the word is. It was somewhat surreal to uh, to realize how applicable the thing was. Uh, all the songs, in, in some in some way, um, when the pandemic set in, we were eager to put this record out really fast, and then because uh, it was just it was ready. But we really wanted to make sure it was right and the timing was right. And uh, we, Seth and I, are are like everyone. We don't really know. Oh, we just don't know what's right. We try so hard to find what's right and we try our best to do what's right. And we so often don't, <laughs> um, <laughs> but we want to be really honest about, uh, about our, our not knowing what's right. Um, so what we do is put our heads down and roll our sleeves up and do what we do and let, uh, hopefully let love and empathy and compassion. Do we just trust that it will be wrapped up in what we say, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm I'm really glad that you say that because I, I kind of relate to that as a radio host. I mean, especially a public radio host is that I just want people to know that in my heart, I want to do the right thing and say mm-hmm. the right thing and do right by people the best that I possibly can. And I think just being vulnerable enough to, you know, admit that and let people know that that's your intention. You know, I, I think that's a really, that's a really important thing to keep in mind, especially right now. It is, it is. Uh, the, the point is, is that uh, we're just trying. We're just trying. And I think that's mm-hmm. where the dividing, like, do you get to a point where you, you don't see the, the need in trying anymore? Do you, that's, that's the danger, I think. That's the, the that's where I don't want to slip into. I'm talking with Scott Avett of the Avett Brothers. Uh, new release, you know, you said in a series, so it's the third Gleam. So it's the Gleam 
Second Gleam, Third Gleam, um, listening to some of the new songs. I mean, it really does. It, it does have a quietness and a, and a reflectiveness for sure. And, and was that the kind of like theme of the series or is that really the theme of this point right now? Yeah, that's that's maybe uh, the general nuts and bolts of the series. So mm-hmm. the idea is that in in a case where an idea is is put out there less developed, then we would assume that it needs to stay in as simple a form as possible. And so we sort of make a made an agreement that uh, early on that it would it would just start with Seth and I and keep keep the ideas simple. I guess in, in a in a in an attempt to keep them close to the source, sort of, you know. Okay. Um, I don't know if that really happens. I, I, I trust that it does. This in this record, Bob came in and helped us because uh, it really called for that. But uh, it, it really is about a quieter, I guess, bringing people in versus going out to uh, to grab people. Sure. You know? Scott Avett of the Avett Brothers, uh, you know, we're still in a global pandemic right now, and this has been the way of life. Gosh, since what, the end of February, early March? I mean, that's when things, at least here in Minnesota, we really mm-hmm. started to feel the effects. And I think, you know, even just across the country, but at least where I live, you know, what has been kind of your number one coping mechanism during this pandemic? Well, you know, we live we live on a farm that, that had been, has been dormant for years. We, we set out to, to make use of it years ago and we, we weren't prepared. And, and I was just too dedicated to... Uh, to traveling and making making work, um, and I still am really. But we saw the need and the importance in sustainability. So I think busying ourselves with that has been uh, a way to cope. Um, not not over over busying ourselves because for me, I don't have the work that I had, and rest has been something that if there's time provided for it, that I actually needed, and I didn't realize mm-hmm. I needed mentally, physically, emotionally. Uh, and so to overlook that, I think would have been a big misstep for me if there was any time for that. Um, with, with the social unrest and, and all that that you watch going on, that is, it makes it harder to stay put and rest. You know, you get, you get nervous energy. You want to get, you want to be part of it. It's really, it, 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 it uh, definitely affects our sleep because we want to do something. We want to, we want to do, we want to do. And, uh, like I said, I don't, I don't always know what to do. So, uh, I think coping is, is, has been a lot of contemplative time for me and allowing things to slow down and being okay with that. Yeah, outside of being a musician and a visual artist, I mean, you're also, you're just a dad, you know, mm-hmm. and um, I, I, my son is four years old and, and it's been easier mm-hmm. for me to explain, you know, there's a virus out there, there's a sickness that, you know, we're mm-hmm. trying to avoid and we're doing our part and wearing our masks and because we want to mm-hmm. get through this. It, for me, it's it's been easier to explain that than like some of the things we've seen on the news, especially being here in the Twin Cities with everything that went on in the wake of, um, you know, the death oh, of George man. Floyd. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, just just as a dad, um, what's it been like for you to have conversations with your family? Yeah, I try my best to... Um not to sugarcoat anything. Uh, I try my best to, to speak in very direct ways to them. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a tendency to when things start getting, uh, very direct to, to, to sugarcoat them or make them sound a little softer. And, uh, I don't know. I feel like our, the generations, uh, right now, I have a five-year-old, a nine-year-old and 11-year-old and they're so much better than we were there. Uh, I think that their experience is, is in the right direction and in, in, in it's, it's progressing uh, as probably ours was uh, beyond our parents or, or ahead of our parents um, or excuse me, after our parents. Uh, mm-hmm. But I just, I just try to speak really direct about it and um, not be afraid to get into some of the, uh, some of the more serious topics. Uh, obviously with a four or five year old, I mean, there's, you know, there are things, some things that just go over their head, but with the nine and 11 year old, we, you know, we talk about it. And uh, at first I thought, you know, these kids are so much better. They don't see color. And it's just not, that's not enough. That's not enough to just think that that's really how it, it's going to be for them. And mm-hmm. I can go off the rails really quick. All I know is that people are people and that I want to, I want them to uh, grow up loving people and that have nothing to do with, in a lot of ways with their advancement uh, that's important. Um, I think we we all are in a position where uh, we need to, uh, if we put our advancement aside, 
we start being able to get out of the way and let people do what they need to do. You know, mm -hmm. get to get mm -hmm. out of the way and let them. Like, this isn't up to you. This is, you better just move. <laughs> you know, you're not <laughs> going to do this. You, you don't control this. So, sure. I, but I mean, I get out of my, out of my, uh, out of my league really quick. I don't, I don't know. I'm just trying to listen and try to be good and uh, do my part. Scott Avid of the Avid Brothers. Talking to me here on The Current, I'm Jill Riley, host of The Current's Morning Show. Uh, the Third Gleam is the new release from the Avet Brothers. And um, just talking a little bit about spending time during the pandemic, resting, uh, again, spending time with family. And, uh, you know, I, I really feel like, at least for me, and you probably feel this too, kind of just being in this kind of reflective period. You know, I know that uh, I've talked to a couple musicians about um, just a really tragic loss during this pandemic. And, you know, th that would be um, John Prine, who mm. uh, succumbed mm. to COVID-19. And I, w I was revisiting um, the Avett Brothers cover of Spanish Pipe Dream. I think you guys just did such a good job with that song. And I loved that tribute because it was such a great moment for a new generation to be introduced to John Prine. That was a really special tribute album when it came out. Oh, man. Yeah, it was such an honor to be a part of it. Uh, the funny thing was, was I was just thinking about this and I did a, a little interview the, the couple days after he passed. Um, I had no idea how connected we were to John Prine uh, um, in his in his humor and in his uh, I just I guess just where he was coming from. But um, I felt I felt unified with him. But the thing was, I had not gotten into his music until they approached us and said, "Hey, we assume you're fans of John, and we'd love for you to be part of this tribute." Or or maybe they said John would love for you to be a part of this tribute. And we we're like, "Well, we're not that fam like we need to we need to hear it." And they sent us his entire catalog on CD. And the first song I heard was that. And I was like, well, there it is. And then that I was just, perfect. It was fitting. Yeah. I mean, this from there on, I was like, well, we are part of this. He's one of the fathers of all this. Like he did it well before us and, and he's teaching us and we're part of it. And I couldn't believe how connected we were to it. And then meeting him and uh, him very much being like a, just like a family member. Just like have us on stage, have yeah, my dad on stage. I mean, he he talked to us like he was one of our cousins or uncles or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable. When was the first time you met him? Was it at some kind of festival? Was it kind of a planned thing? Were you going to play Miz together? Or yeah, well, it might have been Missouri that we met the okay. first time we met him. Uh, but the first time I played, sang with him was at Red Rocks, um, and we did a couple tunes there and. Uh, that was that was the door the door just flung wide open he he uh so easy so easy he just made it so easy made me so comfortable made me feel like i was just a million bucks mm -hmm. you know? and i know that was that was just it probably was intentional and he probably didn't have to try <laughs> it's was, it was incredible <laughs> and then we did it again in dominican or no in mexico uh i mean it was so easy so easy with john Talking about John Prine with Scott Avett of the Avett Brothers. Uh, so you, you can't see this on the radio, but Chris, if you're watching the screen right now, uh, there is a special appearance. Yeah, Brogan. from your dog. Who is this? This is Brogan, the old English sheepdog. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing his job um, right now. Yeah, I was. I was kind of wondering. I was like, either he has some sort of comfort object that he's sort of squeezing during this interview or there's an animal down there. <laughs> this man, yeah, no, right. I'm just I'm like, oh, no, this dog is, is so instinct. Like he is such a herder. He has so much anxiety if he's away from his family. He's just like, man, I gotta, I gotta check my kids. And if they're, if the kids aren't there, then I gotta check Scott. He's a good guy. <laughs> well, it's nice to see him. It's 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 been really fun doing interviews like this to be able to just get a peek into people's lives. And sometimes you see the kids run by. Sometimes the dog yeah, makes yeah. an appearance. Um, I had the opportunity to interview Mavis Staples, and she had to get her door because it was her niece visiting her at the time. And uh, it's just kind of fun <laughs> to, get, to get a look in, um, you know, as we've Zoom been spending so much time at home. Yeah. Yeah, Zoom has been good. I mean, there's been some some def like some improvements to some of the meetings and whatnot. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's definitely we'll be able to use it uh, as a tool from here on out, regardless. I there's, think so. Some good things happening.
Hey, uh, is that the studio that you used when you did the um, the cover for Brandy Carlisle's record? It By is. the way, I forgive it you. Is. In yeah. fact, yeah. In fact, those that black curtain up there is the what I had her sit in front of. Oh, really? Um, yeah, to take it down. Yeah, yeah. To get the the dark lighting in here. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was. It's an incredible, incredible album cover. I mean, it's just an incredible album, but um, you did that. a great job with that. Well, thank you, thank you, thank what, you. What's behind you right now? What are you working on? Well, this I'm not working on this. These are test okay. prints. These are screens that actually those were attempts at the uh, cover album for or the cover work for uh, Closer Than Together. Before it became what it was, I was working with these these eyeballs and this <laughs> this idea of an eye, and so. Uh, they are, they're just actually screens that are just uh, dormant right now. I'm waiting to see where, where they will get used. And then there's one of my uh, son's paintings of, that's the five-year-old's painting of, of his brother. And this is a painting by Ian Felice from the Felice brothers. Okay. Very nice. I have, I have several of his pieces. He's a, a brilliant artist. Okay. A brilliant painter. I mean, yes. so poetic. So good. It's so, so great good. to get a look in and just, you know, I was kind of wondering, okay, what's this painting at the top and what are you working on behind you? So again, this, this is just a cool way to, again, even for fans to kind of just get a glimpse sure. into your space sure. that they may not have gotten before. No, it's nice. Um, you just used the word dormant. And I was just thinking, um, you know, the, the Avett brothers, you know, it's great to put on the records, but to get out and be in front of your fans yeah, I mean, you have yeah. such a big following, yeah. especially for the live shows. And uh, I, I don't know if the plan is to just kind of resume really in full, you know, fingers crossed next year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you guys have something coming up this month, though? Are, are you going to do what, some kind of driving concert that I see? We are. We are on August okay. 29th at, at the Speedway here in Charlotte. It's a way, you know, the template looks safe we really worked hard to, to come up with a way that we could provide safety for people to come out in their cars and if people follow um the bulk of the guidelines they'll be they'll, it'll be a successful situation and there's some other people have done it uh, around the country some of them have not been as successful and um i can understand how that could happen you know it's we're all once again here we go back we're all just trying to figure out how to go through it and not not hurt anybody doing it so uh yeah but it's a drive-in show we have a huge screen there at the charlotte motor speedway that we're going to be performing in front of um but it will be just uh seth bob me and joe for this show uh, just because our traveling situations are not not as 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 what they were so but yeah we'll see about next year we we have high hopes you know the future's bright we're just we're just <laughs> and i mean it's all in, in how we look at it, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we just, just got to weather the, the storm. Scott Avett of the Avett Brothers, The Third Gleam is the uh, the new release. And um, we've been playing a song called Victory on the Current. Um, I, w I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about the song Victory. Just, um, you know, where did the inspiration come from and uh, when did you know that it was finished and it was ready to be recorded? Sure. Uh, going back, the uh, the Gleam series songs are finished much earlier than uh, than I think on some of our other albums because we we push those further. We we spend more time developing them and adding things to them. And in these, we try to stay close to that inception. And um, for the song Victory, it really for all four songs that I added to this record. Uh, my head was was in two places uh, overall. One, musically, I was very moved by, um, I was listening to Mickey Newberry and just taking in all that gentleness and, and the, the intimacy of his, his songs. And two, I was, um, I have been just knee deep in, in Thomas Merton and Richard Rohr and uh, uh, going further back to the cloud of the, of the unknown, cloud of unknowing. Uh, and Christian mystics as for as for the song victory that song is is really about two things one about um, the chorus is really about understanding that we are already in a place of victory and the egoic trip that uh, I am have been on and I'm sure I'm still on uh, that I will undoubtedly lose uh, and that it's kind of an aspiration of accepting that defeat uh okay i am eventually going to bow out 
and and dissolve into victory. And the and the verses really, or excuse me, the the part about the the physical, the broom grass, and all that was was really just checking in, dialing in to those spontaneous, as as James Finley would say, spontaneous contemplative moments that I have. Uh, I had a lot as a child, just moments of quietness, times where I was. I had the privilege of being alone and being quiet and being good with that. Uh, I wasn't making anything. I wasn't producing anything. I wasn't chasing anything. I wasn't worried. Um, and I was at peace and, and one with, with everything that was around me. And uh, those, those are the two things that it's about. It's really about, um, it's really about oneness. You are listening to The Current, Scott Avett of the Avett Brothers. Thanks for chatting. This was a lot of yeah. fun. Thank you so much.